Hey guys, the Bonic Orchard here, bringing you another 2500 point battle report. This is game 5 of War Gamers Con, which was epic because when I went into the uh, pairings, um, I don't know, I mean this is like the second time, like I said, I've done this, but um, there are people that I met at Lone Wolf and that you see on forums or you know on Twitter uh, that you've met and that are just really cool people and you see them at the tournaments and you drink a bunch of beer with them but you never play a game with them you just it just never works out that way you know you always play like some other you know dude that you don't have any idea who they are um, so I went to the pairings and I was paired up against my boy drunk Dan um, so it was it was pretty badass, and Drunk Dan is not did not get that nickname because he is uh, sober most of the time. So it's I knew it was gonna be a fun game. I, I always see the guy whenever I show up at a place. Uh, he's just he's he's awesome. He's an awesome dude. So we had my uh, you know the demons against some dwarfs. So it was, uh, I figured it would be a really good matchup um, for for game five. We were sitting I think on table six uh, for this. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get to some other points that I want to make later on in, in the in the wrap up. But uh, I was super excited to play Dan. So uh, again, here we go. So the scenario was uh, freak flag fly. So it's all about the banners, baby. So what you do is you count up your banners, and whoever has the most, you know, there's your, your plus one to vanguard scout, and who goes first, plus your drop. So um, we had the same number of banners, so we kind of just you know, the whole thing was kind of whatever. But for victory points, you did get two points for killing your opponent's lowest point character and two points uh, for keeping your lowest uh, point character alive. So the dwarf list was a lord, a ruinsmith, with a ruin of stone and ruin of spellbreaking. And it was just one spellbreaking, not two. He had, he had two, uh, two master engineers, a thane, who was his BSB, with the ruin of grungy. His troops were his core, were uh, two units of 30 dwarf warriors with great weapons. And he had uh, his special was four gyrocopters, 38 hammers, and two cannons. And his rare was two organ guns. So uh, lots of cannons, and that's something I definitely don't like seeing with uh, when I play with a greater demon. Obviously, nobody likes to see organ guns and cannons. So here is his deployment. Uh, sorry for the blurry photo. Um, but he has his, you see his gyrocopters there. He actually had one more to the f our far right, but uh, he had his warriors on the outside, hammers in the middle. He was castled up dead center with uh, organ guns on the, the side of the hammers and the cannons behind it. So pretty good, pretty good deployment for him. And then here's mine. Um, on the left, you see the bees, uh, the plague drones, my demonettes, uh, the cannon, my uh, Flood Crushers, I had my other cannon and my Greater Demon hiding behind a <laughs> behind a house because I didn't know what else to do with them. I didn't want him to get shot first turn if I could help it. And where that building's at when we put down terrain, I, I in my head I was kind of like, if I don't get to go first, I need to at least be able to, um, to cover my Greater Demon. It kind of reminded me of the army all over again when you're in basic training. I'm up, he sees me, I'm down. So that was my thought behind that whole process. So we go to go first, and he gets to go first. Um, this is his vanguard moves and his gyrocopter moving. The great thing about playing dwarfs is they have no uh, no move, no magic, <laughs> and they don't move usually. So <laughs> it's kind of like a go. Okay, I'm done with that. Uh, shooting? All right, go. <laughs> um, shooting? Go. <laughs> So um, you'll have to excuse me if I forget a picture or two or uh, anything like that. Uh, Dan, again, really fun guy to play against. He was like, last game, bro, let's get some beer. And I'm like, all right, man. And at War Gamers Con, the beer was two bucks. for I think it was Shiner. Um, so for those of you that are not are outside of Texas, Shiner is kind of our, the local thing here in Texas. It's a Texas beer. I know they have it in other places, but not everybody's had it. It's a pretty good beer. It's it's what it, it is what it is. It's good. They have different flavors or whatever. I'm not a big beer guy. I'm a whiskey guy, so I'll drink whatever. But um, going to get beers, hanging out with uh, Dan was it was it was good fun. It was it was great great fun. Um, so you can see what he did there. So we go into shooting, and his cannons 
Yeah, I mean, they got me. They got me sized up pretty good. Uh, and he aims a cannon at my cannon, and I can't remember how it went down, but he didn't do enough wounds with one, so he had to use two, and, and there it goes. So the cannons uh, did that. His organ guns were ineffective, uh, which was good for me. He might have got a couple wounds off, but we go to the demon uh, turn one, and ignore all this stuff because I forgot to take a picture of it. But because, like I said, dwarves really don't move. You know, here it is. So when I moved up, I moved my keeper all the way behind, um, behind the building. I moved my my blood crushers up, my one cannon up that I still had left. Uh, I moved my demonettes up, and here's the mistake I make in deployment. And I don't know why I do this, but I think I do it almost every single time. I make it so my demonettes have an easy line through forests and woods and stuff, and I never ever and I always put my I always put my my monsters Kevin such behind the forest, which is just stupid. So I need to learn to not do that anymore. So I move up and then we go into magic and I throw down a single target cacophonic at the gyrocopter that was on the other side of uh, that building, which was cool. And uh, that's him, you know, taking it off. It was really a no-brainer. I, I did a ton of wounds to it. And then I threw acquiescence on the hammer unit. So with that out of the way, we go to bottom of turn two, and oh my god, there's the same picture again. So he moves his last remaining gyrocopters around, um, and he puts the, the one with the flame temple actually got to shoot, and so did the one that's in front of my unit that's going to make me have to turn to charge. That's blocking me. The one on the right, however, had to move more than 10 inches to get to where it was at. And you always know when you're playing it's just a chill game when somebody goes, I'm going to do this. And you're like, oh, bro, but you did this. Oh, man, I forgot, you know. And Dan and I, we started drinking, and so there was a lot of that. Uh, <laughs> forgetting things like, uh, <laughs> you know, like... I I'm such a noob. I forget to like check for march blocking sometimes. You know, if I'm march blocked and and stuff like that. And Dan would always just be like, "Hey, bro, you owe me this, man. You gonna cheat me out of a cheat you out of a march blocking roll, bro?" So he he got me good. Uh, but he it was a fun game. So he flames the demonettes and it's it's like killing elves. So bam, there there they go. I mean, it's not not hard to to start deleting a bunch of demonettes so they kind of go away uh, he shoots a cannon at my juggernaut or my blood crushers and I roll a six on my ward so whoop whoop and that's a six because he shoots at my cannon and he misses so whoop whoop um, but then his organ guns open up and again uh, I get a bunch of saves and he didn't roll particularly well so you know when he gets the shots it was like six shots and, and you know I think he rolled a two and a two once um, so not a lot went down on that. So I ended up taking two wounds, though. So <sighs> it is what it is. And then, uh, so we go to my turn. And I'm going to kind of just skip this slide and go to the next one. Because this is a little bit more accurate of what is going on. Um, I charge my blood crushers into his warriors. And I'm thinking, you know, I can do something. Uh, and of course, I fail... I, I think I failed difficult terrain and, and I put another a wound or on my or two difficult terrain tests and I uh, when I charged two so I put two wounds on one of my blood crushers which is just marvelous. Um, I run my keeper out from behind the building and my thought now is I'm gonna bubble cack. And sometimes I get so excited and just bubble cack, you know, I get to roll lots of dice and does a lot of cool stuff that I don't think it through necessarily. And it was game five. I probably should have just single cacked. But I needed to bubble cack to get rid of the organ gun and one of the cannons. And then my thought was I'd have my other cannon take out the last remaining cannon. So that was the idea. It was to take out all the artillery in one, one turn, be done with it. Unfortunately, when I bubble cack, that's going to put me in a weird situation the way it ends up. But you'll see. It's just a weird, it's a weird spot for me. So um, we go into magic. And, of course, I, of course I bubble cack. Uh, but I do it irresistibly. But the good news is I rolled like a 7, so nothing happens. And, you know, you just, a ton of wounds start happening. Uh, there we go, right there. And that is Dan getting ready to say hello to me. Yep, there it is. He said hello. Say hello to my little friend. 
But I took all your shit off, bro. So F you back. No, nah, I'm just playing. I hate that guy. No, I really don't, though. So anyway, so we keep kind of going, and uh, I go to shooting, and there's the misfire, because you know that was coming, right? <laughs> when you when you lined it up perfect, and you're like, this is going to be the turn. I crushed the dwarf artillery. Yeah, misfire. So uh, I knew that I was going to be taking a cannonball to the face. To the face on that turn, the next turn. I was just, ugh, I was not looking forward to it. So we go into combat here, and I do a bunch of wounds. I stomp, uh, but he has ranks, and he's got great weapons. And he he smokes, does three wounds. He kills one of my guys, easy. Uh, again, sorry for the weird picture. I think when I was getting a little tipsy, that was not a blurry picture, but whatever. Um... Remember what that was for, but oh, that was his brain. Uh, what is that for? I don't know what that was for. Anyway, I don't remember. But anyway, this is where, if you remember, his gyrocopter was. So I charged in the gyrocopter, and the way I had lined it up, it's if I rolled high enough, I was going to run into the next unit. And it just so happens, instead of me saying, "Oh, I'm going to reform," like a smart person, I you know, decided to overrun, going, yeah, I'm going to get into combat some more. I'm an idiot. And I rolled a 10. And that 10 put me into combat. So, here I am in combat with him, and I'm not... <laughs> just not very pleased with myself. Because when I do that, if you see where my beasts are at, now my beasts and Urgle are completely out of the way. My plague drones don't have anything to go to. So I basically blocked everything off. Again, a little common sense would go a long way. But in my mind, if I roll really well here, I'm going to just evaporate that unit. But the hammers have are, are, have acquiescence on them, basically, so they have random movement D6. So if he picks it up and pivots, he's going to smash into my flank with hammers at, what, strength 7 on the charge? It's just not looking good for the demonettes. I mean, that's just bad. It's bad, bad, bad. Excuse me. I yawned. So in movement, he moves his gyrocopters over my cannon. And the picture pretty much says this at all. <laughs> but he moves the gyrocopter over, and he's like, I'm dropping the bomb. You know, rolls it, misfire, takes a wound. And he's like, all right. The other one's doing the same thing. And he rolls it, misfire, takes a wound. He's like, well, that was perfect. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, that kind of sucks, bro. And uh, he's like, well, that's okay, I have a cannon, and I'm going to put a cannon to the face of your greater demon. And I'm like, oh, no, please miss, please miss. And, uh, yeah, he missed. <laughs> I don't remember what distance he guessed, but I think he did something weird. Instead of saying, like, ten from the back, he said, like, eight from the back or something weird. And basically, he rolled, like, a ten, and it went right over my greater demon's head. And I was like, that was boss. And then you'll see... How he has this, he moved his engineer up. He's trying to block my greater demon so that my <clears throat> greater demon, excuse me, is going to have to hit his master engineer and then go around. I don't think he realized that I'm just going to run around him and I have a 20 inch run. So, eh, whatever. So, we go into combat. Or, uh, I'm sorry, so, so we go into his turn. Um, and here it is. He pushes it basically all in. So the hammers hit the, the, my flank. Okay, um, I did that completely out of order for some weird reason. So he moves in. He would have done all the shooting. But he moves in. The hammers in the flank. And I'm just like, I'm such an idiot. So uh, he deletes what's left of my blood crushers. Um, I do some more wounds, but I pretty much whiff. And... I know now that I have to get out of there because <laughs> I do not want to have a bunch of strength five guys hitting at my greater demon with the uh, with my uh, eternal blade. So yeah, I know I have to skedaddle. And here is the combat right here that I'm really I'm just like ugh. So you can see that he already killed my herald, which she's pulled out in the back. So it, no. And I forgot how many it is. I don't think... I think that what you saw there is kind of what I took in the first round. 
Um, I took like five or six wounds and I lost my herald and a challenge which pulled things out. Um, so with combat being done, we go to my turn. And I charge my plague drones into the side of his hammers and I charge my cannon into his the rear of his hammers. Now, here's the deal. Dan is the chillest dude I, I, I know. Okay? We're having a couple drinks and... I fly into his guys, and he's like, hey, bro, take a difficult terrain test for me. D don't forget about the difficult terrain. You owe me that, man. You owe me that at least. And I'm like, okay. Because right now, I'm feeling like the world is going to swallow the hammers. I feel like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit them and hit them again. The, the plague drones are going to stick. I'm going to have three over there. I'm disrupting all sorts of stuff. I should win combat here. Life will be good. Right? That, that's that's kind of where I'm at. I'm stomping. That's three more wounds. It'll be good. So I go to take my difficult terrain test, and I roll three ones. So I'm like, well, crap. So I go, I, got, I owe you three ward saves, man. Let me let me make them real quick. And he's like, well, no, man. You, you have to do D6 wounds to each one of them. And I'm like, no, 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 it's not. It's, it's one, right? And he's like, bro. Trust me when I say this. It's happened to me before. And I really am not uber confrontational with people I consider my friends or I'm very friendly with at tournaments. It just, I don't see the point in it. Um, you know, why ruin a good time with, with this? And he was very passionate about that he was right. And so I took his word for it. I'm a newbie at this. He's been around a lot longer than me. I just trusted he knew what he was talking about. Yes, I know that he's wrong. Yes, I know that there's only one wound apiece. So, but it's my bad luck that I rolled three freaking ones. So, whatever. So it basically deletes the unit. It, I, I put on eight wounds total when I did the whole. When other things said that eight wounds happened to my uh, my plague drone, and you can see my unit of demonettes up there. That's how many were left. But this is when the game started to go extremely downhill for me. So my cannon busts into his hammers, and I roll a one for the impact hits. And then I proceed to whiff with my cannon and my uh, plague drone. My demonettes basically whiff forward. So I'm pretty much sitting in front of him now and I'm kind of like, oh, fudge. I, I, I'm thinking the whole time, I'm thinking I should just put more fight for the, the difficult terrain test, but whatever, I'm still going to win this. It's dwarves, right? It's just dwarves. Dwarves. Stupid dwarves. Hate them. Um, so, yeah. Um, and then this is the rest of the movement for the phase. I run my keeper over here, uh, trying to kind of give a little help. Um, I can't obviously charge in, but next turn I'm like, if this is all still sitting here, I'm bringing the keeper in and I'm really going to start jacking some crap up. And I know I'm going to take another cannonball to the face, but whatever. It, it is what it is. So, after combat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it all just went away Poof. <laughs> so it all goes away pretty much and I'm like oh no I'm going to lose my fifth game I started off so well going 3-0 and and I'm going to lose and then get beat by dwarves I never lose to dwarves so whatever happens crap so we go to his turn and sorry for the blurry picture again he moves his gyrocopters up, he turns his, his warriors around, he starts moving in on me. Uh, so, the end is nigh. He pops the cannon into my greater demon, and you can see the blurry three there. He gets me with three wounds, and now I'm like, I have to get into combat. There's no ifs and buts about it. It is what it is. Um, there's a better picture of before the cannon smokes me. So, on this turn, he completely and utterly deletes my demonettes and I'm like oh, crap so basically <laughs> I have my beast of Nurgle and I have my keeper of secrets all in all it's about what is that like 800 points sitting on the table right now you know five models 800 points like okay great if not more might be almost a thousand points so I know I have to get in and start wrecking some shop here and you can see where he put his gyrocopter. Again, he thought he was going to block me up from this charge. But um, you get the free wheel. And the way it... I should have took a better picture of the angle. But I charged. I make it. 
and with my free will, you know, and then you maximize, this is what I have. Um, and yes, my keeper actually does charge to the front of him. So I'm in base to base contact. It is what it is. <clears throat> I'm just going to try to start smashing up characters and to just eat eat his unit up right here. And the beasts are now in the flank, and my keeper's in the front. So, you know, whatever. So the close-up blurry picture. And a more close-up blurry picture. So combat happens, and you see I just delete a bunch of crap. My keeper takes a wound, which, thank God, for. So, you know, I do all there. And so we go to his turn, and he pushes in his his uh, warriors into my keeper. And here's where I was kind of a nice guy. I think I was a nice guy. He charged his engineer into my keeper too. <laughs> and <laughs> I know he wasn't thinking about it. So I just I kinda like, I grabbed this model and I pushed it away. And he was like, bro, what are you doing? And I'm like, man, I'm like, you don't want to do that. He's like, yeah, I do, man. I do, I do. I'm like, no, you really, really don't. Because I'm just going to miss you a challenge. And you got no characters really left but that engineer. And so I'm going to destroy that dude. And I'm going to get seven seven uh, combat res because I'm going to eat that dude's lunch. And he's like, oh, yeah, dude, dude, you're so right. And I'm like, I'm just helping you out, bro. I probably should have just let him do it, but ah, whatever. So uh, he charges in, and he really thinks he's going to kill me this time. Um, but for one of my demonic gifts, I, I didn't say it earlier, I did roll a six for always strikes first. So he runs in, and my greater demon is always striking first. So um, I basically completely destroy the hammers, and what I did was I turned my keeper around, and I concentrated on the unit of warriors. I just smacked the bejesus out of them. I had nine, I think I rolled, when I rolled my D3 for my turn ability, I rolled three, so I had nine attacks. I hit with everything, I wound with everything. You know, it's like, just take him off, and then thunder stomping. But he still has a rank left. So, I was like, no! Um, I was hoping that I could actually break him, but he's steadfast right there. And you know, dwarves aren't going anywhere. So, and then my beast overrun into his warriors. So, yeah, that's that's the ball game right there. Um, so it ended up being a tie, and I ended up finishing 16th. And I, I don't know why I didn't think about it, but it was basically like a 10-10 tie, and I think we both got some bonus objectives uh, for killing the cheapest units. I just know that I didn't think about people leapfrogging you in the tournament. And when the game got over, Dan actually said, we were sitting there, and there was another buddy that Dan's, and you know I got to know him at that tournament. He was a really cool guy, demon player. He's like, dude, I thought you were going to smash doors. What happened? And we were talking about it, and he's like, no, it's one wound for difficult terrain for plague drones. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, no, I know. It's, it's cool. It's whatever. And Dan started, he actually argued with the guy. He's like, no, I know I'm right. I know I'm right. And then he said, he said the words. He said, don't make me look it up and prove you wrong. And so Dan grabs the rule book. And he's looking through it, and I knew I knew I was right. And I just it didn't at the time I didn't care because I was like, well, whatever, it is what it is. And he sets the rule book down, and I never thought I would see a guy have the look of like, wow, I'm a total ass clown. Because he looked at me, he goes, I cheated, bro. I told you a rule. I wanted to argue about the rule, and I'm I'm wrong. You know that that could have been a game changer. You know you were in the flank. I didn't. Really didn't do anything to the plague drones. It was combat res that got me, and you'd have had like nine attacks, you know, nine, 13, 14 attacks into me, and stomps, and this and that. I should have lost. I, I you should have cleaned up those hammers. You'd have been cleaning up everything else. And I'm like, man, it, it's not a big deal. He's like, no, I'm gonna change the, I'm gonna change my score. And I'm like, dude, it's really not that big of a deal. And I really didn't think about it at the time. Um, I probably should have been like, yeah, do it. But then I'd been, that'd have been a dick move, um, in my opinion. It, you know, whatever. So I was like, I'll take the time. So I ended up at 16th. And after it, <laughs> we get the Masters results. And I'm sitting in the top 20 for Masters. And I'm like, if I just would have said change it, I might be up there. But, you know, in all honesty, I'd love to qualify for Masters. But I listen to the podcast. I listen to the guys that are going. And 
I don't know the rules of this game a ton. My army isn't painted super well. I I don't want to go to the... I would hate to qualify for the Masters and kind of almost embarrass Texas by going with my demon list that's not uber competitive. It is what it is. It's... But I'm, I'm trying to learn to paint better and I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get better at it. But I want to go to Masters. I want to qualify so badly for it. But on the other hand... You know, I, I think that I would be kind of like the dead weight guy <laughs> if I went because there's so many dudes who are just so much better. You know, it, it, I, and I play wherever to drink and have fun, so eh, whatever. It is what it is. But thank you for watching, guys. I'm going to be popping out another video on my thoughts of uh, War Gamers Con uh, a little bit later. And uh, if you're listening, Lord Tremendous, I haven't forgot about you. So, yeah, take that, sucker. But anyway, uh, see y'all on the flip side. Peace!